that hit Joe? Yeah. Get away with it, Joe. Got a hurry, pal. I'm surprised Pop by having his dinner cooked when he gets home. Where's your ma, son? Dead. Dead and pop and ma to me, mister. And now he's gone. Well, your dad was a brave man, and he died game. You can always be proud of that, son. That's funny. Coming from you, a lawman. You're crazy. Joe and me was pals. Yes, pals. Because you didn't have the nerve to pull the crooked work without Pop. You could think up the sneaking things to do. But it took Pop's nerve to do them. He was brave, but weak. Don't blame me. That lawhound killed your Pop. It wasn't me, son. It is the law I represent. That's what I told Pop would happen. That's one lesson they teach you in school. Well, that's one lesson you must always remember, son. Let's you and I have a talk. My pop wasn't scared of anything. Some people said he was bad. But they were just jealous. That's right. Suppose that you go down the trailer ways and wait for me. You're the boss, Sheriff. That's the boy. Good shooting, Tim. You know, Bill, I still 
think you made a mistake as resigning as sheriff. Now look at the help I could have been as your deputy. Well, I hope that you won't have to make orphans out of innocent children. I get you, Bill. That bird sure looks deserted. Suppose there's anybody living in it? I don't know. The last time I was in Silver City, it was filled with people. During the silver boom, the miners built it overnight. Well, from here, it looks like a one-night job. Come on, let's have a look. Why, Bill Jones, you old horse thief. Well, if it ain't my old pal, Hiram McDuff. <laughs> Hiram, I want you to meet my partner, Tim. Just roaming around and looking for a place to settle. <laughs> Glad to meet up with you, Mr. Hiram. No wonder you're telling me. 
pond's deserted. You give folks such a warm welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I ain't taking any chances these days. Wolf Lawson is loose in these parts, and he's raising heck. Wolf Lawson? The Bannock and Killer? Yes, he's all of that. And more. And when I meet up with him, I'm a shooting and asking questions afterwards. His gang has been making raids all around Silver City. So far, they ain't bothered me yet. The town is supposed to be full of hands and ghosts of the former citizens. Hanted? Say, Phil, what kind of lingo is he using? <laughs> he means haunted, ghosts, spooks, spirits. Say, I suppose uh, Lawson and his gang are superstitious like all of his kind. What I heard, they've got more pet hands than any outfit in the West. <laughs> Say, Bill, come here. I want you to meet the prettiest gal in Montana. Howdy, Jones. I'm tickled to death to see I'm you. I'm glad to see you, too, Uncle Hiram. Say, is my credit still good? Why, you know better than to ask me that. Anything I've got is yours. Oh, thanks, Uncle Hiram. Say, I want you to meet some old friends of mine. This is Bill Jones, and this is Tim, Miss Jones Stanley of the Cross Am Ranch. How do you do? Glad to know you, Miss. How do you do, ma'am? Oh, I mean, Miss. Um, the last of my riders quit yesterday, Harlem, after they saw this. Cross them punches, clear out, or you'll get what old Ed Stanley got. Wolf. Ed Stanley is Joan's uncle. He laughed at Wolf Lawson's threats, but they killed him on the last raid. Since then, riders have been scared to punch for the cross him. My brother Frank's the only man left on the place now. He can't do much alone, though. And the cattle are so badly scattered from Wolf Lawson's last raid. I don't know what to do, Uncle High. If the men had only stayed just a few days more, the Cross M's obligations at the bank could have been met. I've been thinking of that, Joan. And I made a deal a little while ago with Bill and Tim. They're going to go to work for you. Did Hiram tell you the cross M was broke? Money don't mean a thing to Tim and I, Miss Jones. When do we go to work? Right now. We leave for the ranch just as soon as I get a few things from the store. Just pick out anything you want, Joan. Tim, get those two horses. Listen, Bill, you're going to run into a lot of trouble out at that Cross M Ranch, so be careful. I wouldn't have got you into this. Joan needs help so bad. Hank, why don't you close up the store and come out the ranch with us? You can still fork a front, can't you? What? Close my business? Why not? You haven't taken in two dollars in six months. Five years ago when I rode through, you were still talking about the boom. Well, it's going to boom, too. Someday, Silver City is going to be a big place. <laughs> Why, you've been saying that for 20 years. You know, if I had a niece like Joan, I'd, uh... Joan ain't my niece. She only calls me uncle, or as everybody else does. And Bill, Joan's a mighty fine girl. Her uncle and me used to prospect together. Oh, she'll live that down. <laughs> now, listen, yeah. If you think I'm a piker, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get my horse and ride over to San Miguel and see if I can get you some riders. And if I don't, I'll padlock this burg up and I'll show you what an old timer can do when it comes to fucking Bronx. 
<laughs> That's the best thing you've said. <laughs> everybody in the county where we're hanging out? Well, I could hear you singing a mile down the trail. It's a cinch if any star packers happen to be scouting around, we'll be hearing from them. Red, you're supposed to be in charge when I'm gone. Don't you know any better than to let these crazy galoots make so much noise? Oh, we're safe enough here, Wolf. And besides, the boys gotta have some fun sometime. Well, I'll let them know when they can have some fun. And you too. You're too particular. Yep. Come on, you yellow four punchers. Come on. Why don't you keep coming? Huh. A fine outfit I got around me. There ain't a man among you has got nerve enough to be bad by yourself. You got to be backed up like a wolf pack. Hey! Is the rider coming up the trail this way? Well, your squawking and howling brought one visitor anyway. Get back around the fire the way you were. And be ready for anything that comes up. Go on. How do you, fellas? You need to be afraid of me. I ain't Wolf Lawson. I didn't mean to butt in on you this way, but I heard you singing from up on the trail and thought I'd drop down and see if I knew any of you. Well, it uh, sounds like this Wolf Lawson's a pretty bad hombre. Bad? Why, the mangy coyote would cut his grandmother's own throat for a charge of backy. Why, he'd steal the gold turns out of a dead man's teeth. The manger coyote, he's lower than a snake's belly. And if I ever catch up with him, I'm spilling him so full of lead he'll have to take a bath in a dishpan to keep him drowning himself. Well, I'm sure glad to meet up with a man in your caliber, stranger. You know, you and me's got the same ideas about bandits. That's the way to talk. I remember once when I was running for sure from Silver City. I run on a platform. The lawbreakers must go. Well, did you get elected? Why, it was a landslide. Everybody in town voted for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a fact. The most of them did. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that was, of course, was some time back when the town was a lively little burg. Say, by the way, you fellas ain't looking for work, are you? No, uh, we're not looking for work, but I reckon we could take on most anything comes along. Well, say, that's fine, because I can give you all jobs starting tomorrow morning. Where? At the Crossem Ranch for Miss Joan Stanley, the nicest girl in Dole, Montana. Well, it sounds like a good idea. Never heard a better one. Yeah, I reckon we ought to be able to handle that stock. It's a deal. 
Me and the boys will show up at the cross end the first thing in the morning. Well, say, that's fine. And you just tell Miss Stanley that Hiram McDuff sent you. And say, by the way, don't say anything about wages until after the cattle have been rounded up and sold. I'll take care of you myself until then. Oh, forget it. We'll handle across them cattle for nothing, just to keep in practice. Well, say, that's mighty white of you. By the way, I run the store over at Silver City. So just stop over there any time you need any supplies. Uh, we'd just as soon keep away from that town, mister. Folks say it's full of haunts. Oh! <laughs> I haven't seen or heard of a ghost in Silver City for... Oh, for a couple of years. Mm, not since Crazy Ike hung himself from the rafters in my store. <laughs> <laughs> Say, was that the other fellow that voted for you? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we know there ain't no such thing as ghosts. But if it's all the same to you, you can bring our supplies out to us. Well, just holler out if you need anything, and I'll see that you get it. Say, Dave, cross them ranch. He's on the road just west of Silver City. I'll be seeing you in a few days. Say, Look out for that murdering cutthroat wolf of Washington, Humbry. Well, adios. Watch out for Wolf Lawson, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Be ready to ride. And clean yourselves up a little bit if that's possible. And remember this, until I tell you otherwise, I'm John Smith. So keep your eyes and your ears open and your traps shut. Get busy now. Get some water down there. Well, we've rounded up the main herd, and the boys are bringing in the strays. Good work, Bill. How are you, sis? Hello, Frank. Say, it's lucky for us that Hiram hired such fine riders. They sure know how to handle cattle. Yeah, they're a bunch of hustlers, all right. You're right about that. But I've always been suspicious of that John Smith hombre. I told you. than any other place. He said to watch out for birds for that name. Because no chances out of ten they're hiding from something. <laughs> oh, I don't think we have to worry about that, Jim. Hiram wouldn't send anyone that he didn't think was all right. men on guard tonight. We're pulling out first thing in the morning. Right. I'll have everything ready for the drive. Say, Chief, why didn't we take care of them today? While they were out, everything else takes. I'm running this outfit, and you'll all do as I say. We're driving the cattle at dawn, you get me? I think we've been stalling around here too long. Someone will get wise to us, then it'll be just too bad. Anytime you pin-headed birds think you can run my affairs, just speak up. I told you we were pulling out of here at daylight, and that goes. And I may be taking the lady boss along with us. So be careful how you act around her from now on. Uncle Tyrant, deliver to Bill Jones the money you agreed to advance for the cattle drive. Thanks a lot, Jones. There you are, Bill. You give that to Uncle Hiram, and he'll turn the
of money over to you. It won't be much, but it'll be enough to take care of expenses on the drive. What? Say, Miss Jones, I've always heard that every boy's entitled to a mother's love. Is that right? Why, yes, Jim, I imagine so. That's right, ain't it, Pop? Well, haven't I always been a good father? Oh, I ain't complaining, but I've been doing some hard thinking. You better not strain that think tank of yours, Jim. It'll stunt your growth. That's just why I brung this up. I can't think of nothing else. Well, Tim, what are you talking about? Well, I've got a dad and he's a... Now, if you'd hitch double with Bill, that motherly love and protection program would be all set for me. Then I could keep on growing. Well, I... I think I'll be heading for Silver City. Oh, I think that Bill will understand, Tim. I know I do. Honestly? Mm -hmm. Oh, John, I'm going to tell Bill right now that everything's going right. Tim! Tim, Bill! Oh, Tim! Ah! <laughs> oh, if I ever fall in love, I'm going to take Tim along with me. Oh, he's a great fixer. <laughs> all right. About you marrying Joan, she said everything was all right and she wasn't a bit sore at me. Say, will you quit buttoning into my business? Hombres are going to Silver City with me. I'd so like to go with you, Bill, but I gotta wash my red flannels. My saddle's counting on the blink, and I gotta fix it for tomorrow. Ah, oh, why don't you birds admit you're just plain scared? That town's full of ghosts, Bill. And living around him is what makes old Hiram so cuckoo. I wouldn't go there on a bet. Well, it looks like you're gonna have to go for yourself. This outfit's plumb scared of their own shadows. Hey, what are you doing back there, snooping around? Stanley's ghost. Oh, keep still, you crazy galoot. You'll have me getting the jitters. There ain't no such thing as ghosts. Oh, no. <laughs> you better turn in early, boys. We're leaving at daybreak. Yeah. Keep an eye on things while I'm gone, Tim, and look out for the ghost of the bunkhouse. Right. Everything goes through just as we planned. We'll have a nice balance at the bank, sis.
You want something, Smith? Just a little private powwow with, with your sister. Well, when I want to see you, I'll send for you. Do you mind leaving now? Wolf Lawson takes orders from no one. Time up. I'm pulling out of here with your cattle in the morning. And uh, I've kind of taken a fancy to you, so you're going along, too. Oh, don't be afraid. Wolf Lawson ain't such a bad hombre. Wolf Lawson? You won't find me such a hard fellow to get along with. Get a good night's rest. You got a long Well, here you are, Bill. I'm glad everything turned out so well at the ranch. Well, the herd's all ready to leave, Harm. So by the day after tomorrow, Jones' financial worries will be all over. Well, boy, I knew them hummers I hard could cut the mustard. <laughs> Never was fooled with a man in my life. No, sir. I can pick out the good ones and dodge the bad ones every time. You're right, Harm. What are you doing here, Tim? My pop is right about these John Smith fellers. The one hire I'm hired is, isn't a John Smith at all. It's Wolf Larson in his gang. Wolf Larson? How do you know he's the wolf? I heard him say so. He's holding Joan of Frank prisoners at the ranch house. He's going to take Joan with him tomorrow when he steals the cattle. What a fine stunt to pull. Out of all the hombres in Montana, you would pick out Larson and his gang to work on the ranch. Go ahead, Bill. Hold me out. I deserve it. I ain't got as much brains as a ghost that's supposed to hunt this bird. Speaking of ghosts, that gives me an idea. You used to be an undertaker, didn't you? Yes, but what's that got to do with Wolf Lawson and his gang? Say, have you got any black shroud in your store? Why, sure. I haven't buried anybody for ten years. You beat it on the San Mateo. And get the sheriff. Tim and I are going to do a little painting on those shrouds and hit back to the Cross M. Hey, shrouds? You guessed it. The ghosts of Silver City are going to pay Lawson and his gang a visit 
Tonight. Say, are we going to be the ghost of Silver City? That's what I'm hoping for, son. Gee, I always wanted to be a ghost. Well, you'll have a chance tonight. Here. Kim, see if you can find a paintbrush with some white paint. I sure wish Wolf would let somebody else knife her. This is a spooky spot. You're full of spooks, Jed. Did you ever see a haunt? No, and I don't want to. They tell me if ever one gets on your trail, you never get rid of it. Oh, haunts ain't so bad, Jed. Why, well, I can remember the time when Hank here and me stayed in the haunted house all night. And about four o'clock in the morning, yeah, just about this time, all of a sudden the lights went on and down the stairs come a spook. Remember that, Hank? Sure. Say, he walked right in on us without making a sound. And asked for the makings. <laughs> of course, we were kind of scared at first. But after we'd had a few smokes with him, why, we got kind of acquainted. See? Of course, he was a peculiar sort of a... Hiram's got the sheriff by this time, and they should reach across town by daybreak.
mine. Mine's gone, too. Can talk strike a light. What's going on here, anyway? Somebody must have been in here. Kentuck is next. You! I know we shouldn't have killed old Stanley Wolf. It, it says I'm next. You fools! There's no such thing as ghosts. It's only a trick. Well, they ain't gonna play no tricks on me. I'm gone. Ah, oh, you low cold idiots. Are you half wits? I tell you, it's a frame up. Well, frame up or not, I'm living here frontal. I am too. All right, we'll all go. We'll get the girl, meet the fellows with the cattle, and pull out of here. Here, I'm going to try to get rid of that guide and release Frank and Joan. Right. Up with them, quick. Now you tie him, Frank.
Where's Tim? Tim? Why, Tim was here a minute ago. Come on, get going, you big bad wolf! Ow! Here's your wolf, Sheriff. He ain't so tough. Now I pulled his thing. That's right. Come on, boys, take him out. Go on, get him out of here. Go on, get him going, get him going. <laughs> well, now that Wolf Lawson is out of the road, Joe, you won't have any trouble getting writers for your ranch. That ain't the half of it. That $2,500 reward on Lawson, that the will kind of straighten things out around here, I'm thinking. Well, I'll see you later. Tim. You know, about that motherly love and protection program. So I could keep on growing. <laughs> Tim, don't you think you and I better take a little walk? There's times, you know, when even the best of friends ain't wanted. I get you, Uncle Come on, Frank. Relatives ain't <laughs> one of these. <laughs> Frank, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Joan. How about letting Tim grow up? <laughs> 